One of the big issues that provokes the idea that science and God are in conflict is the idea that many people have of God, actually. They think God is like a Greek deity, invented to cover up our lack of understanding. So if you don't know what lightning is, you have a God of lightning. And we call a God like that a God of the gaps, because once we discover how lightning works, the God disappears. And if you define God to be like that, of course you have to choose between God and science, because that's the way you define God. The God of the Bible is not a God like that. Genesis says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is, he created the whole show, everything. The bits we do understand, the bits we don't. And interestingly, it's the bits we do understand that powerfully point towards him. And I often think of Isaac Newton when he discovered the law of gravity. He didn't say, now I've got gravity, I don't need God. What he said was, what a genius of a God that does it that way. The fact that the pioneers of modern science, as we might call it, like Galileo, Kepler, Newton, coming up to Clark Maxwell, were believers in God, I'm not sure how well known it is. And I find many school-level kids have never heard this. Because, of course, it means that far from belief in God hindering the rise of science, it was the motor that drove it. The reason for writing Can Science Explain Everything is to show people that actually the truth is that science points towards God, not away from Him. And also to go into the question of the rationality of Christianity, not simply can we reconcile science and faith in God, which we can, I believe, but to show that Christianity is a rational belief system. And we can think about, for example, events like the resurrection of Jesus rationally. We're not going beyond rationality or committing intellectual suicide. So that's basically the reason for writing the book.